Yeah. Uh, hip hop and jazz. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hip hop and jazz. Yeah. Uh huh. What? What? Jazz, hip hop, bond like fusion. Slow grooving sounds that get the crowd moving. So for your amusement, we come to play. A little Kenny G, a little Miles D, a little Sade. I get busy when I listen to Dizzy yeah. and relax when I hear Cold Train on sax. In Jazz. fact, I feel my loneliness with keys from Thelonious. Yeah. Monk anytime, day or night, week or month. So don't try to front like it's something you don't want. It's jazz, jazz music, y'all. Yeah. yeah. Well, this week which continues to be my birthday month, I'm going to continue to talk to you about some things that's in my heart. And um, hopefully uh, you can smile, you can laugh, you can cry or whatever, but I don't think it's going to make you cry today. But I do have a deeper part of me that I'm going to talk about here before the end of this month of August. Hopefully before the end of the month of August, I'll at least have it recorded and someone is going to take the reins, switch seats and interview me and see what I'm all about. Let me tell my story of experience, strength and hope. So we'll try that. Uh, well, let's go here. This is something that kind of bothers me sometimes. You know, when we talk about experience, strength and hope. Let me tell you about this experience because anyone, anyone who knows me know that I hate going to return things and exchange things at Walmart and any other mart. To me, and to me, you know, the service desk is just like a nightmare for hell for me. I just hate going up to the service desk, hate standing in that line, hate looking around, hate waiting, and I, because I'm always anticipating that it's gonna be a problem up there. I just hate service desks. I hate standing in line. I hate this customer service thing with a passion. It just sends chills up and down my spine. And I know what you're saying is like, you know, man, Walmart takes stuff back from anything. Yeah, they might be right. I think Walmart will take stuff back from Kmart if you let them, <laughs> you know, if you took it there. But it's just the dreaded line. It's just the dreaded customer service agent sitting up there looking at you like this, you know. And I can be honest with you, if I worked customer service and I worked up there, I'd probably be thinking the same thing some of them thinking. You know, they use this. This is old. You wore these shoes, now you're bringing them back. Uh, these ain't the same batteries. You know, I'd be, you know, I'm just talking about how I am. I would always be looking for a loophole out of giving you your stuff back, like it's my stuff. It ain't my stuff, it's Walmart stuff, but I would, I would be trying to look for a loophole just to not give you back your stuff. And that's how I, I'm thinking like that and saying that because that's how I feel when I go to customer service. When I go to the desk, that's how I feel. It's just like a nightmare. You know, I don't care. I, I just hate it. You know, I, I've already programmed my mind for a conflict the minute I get home and find out the shoes are too little. Not just Walmart shoes, because I'm wet of them. But the shoes are too little. The tie is wrong. Uh, you got a, uh, seven rolls of toilet tissue, and you're supposed to have eight, you know. Uh, the bread is smashed up. You look at it, it's starting to mold. The bread is old. And what do you have to do? You want to take that purchase back. And I already sense, as soon as I see something's wrong with the shirt that I just bought at H&M, as soon as I see something wrong with the shoes that I just got from dealers, got home, I'm thinking, oh, here we go. I got to go through all this. I got to go through this again. I'm feeling, man. I'm like, man, I don't want to go back up there. I don't want to take this stuff back up there. It just drives me nuts. And the worst of all is the counter and the drive through at a food place, like when you're ordering food. That's even worse to me. When you're ordering food, you get one person at a window, I mean, at, at the, at the uh, menu. I don't know whatever. 
You say, huh? You just place your order. Then they repeat it back to you. Thank God you can see it on the menu stuff. You say, I want it like this. I want it like this. Or I want it like that. And it seems like you can never get it right. From cold fried to no cheese to extra cheese to extra tomato. It seems like I can always get it wrong. Now, I recently went to McDonald's. For some reason, I was just craving a McDonald's double cheeseburger. I don't even eat them that much. But I was craving a McDonald's double cheeseburger for days. But every time I go past there, the line would be out to the street. And I said, I'm craving it, but I don't want it that bad. You know what I mean? So I saw the line was shorter one day. And I drove in there. And I went to the drive-thru. According to COVID-19 guidelines, I went through the drive-thru. And I ordered a cheeseburger with extra onions. No pickles. Extra onion, no pickles is what I said. And I got to the second lady who takes your money. She said, did you have the cheeseburger with the extra onions? I was like, ha, they got them right. I'm on it now. I say, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So I got to the next one. Paid my money. I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm elated. You know, I got my cheeseburger I've been craving for two or three weeks, you know. Get there, riding down the street a little bit because it smells so good. I wanted to take a bite before I got home. Get and look in the package and unwrap the burger and onions fell out everywhere. And there was no onions on the burger. All the extra onions was on top of the bun. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of laughed about it for a minute. All those extra onions were on top of the bun. Mind you, I was about eight cars deep in the line, so there was no way I was going to turn around and come back and bring that cheeseburger. I wanted that cheeseburger with the extra onion, extra pickle, but I didn't get it. So, like I said, I got down the street, unwrapped it, and persisted get ready to eat my burger when I noticed the extra onions. Those extra onions were there, but however... They were on top of the burger. Now, I know the average person, the average Joe Blow or average one of you, would have turned back around, got in that line, waited outside according to COVID-19 guideline. Put your mask on. Come up to the counter if you can get in or to the window if you want to go through there. Say, you know, can I take your order, sir? Oh, I'm not ordering. Uh, okay, sir, what do you want? I'm not ordering. I just had an order is messed up. Okay, can you please pull around to one of the empty spots? Come on. I'm not going to go through all that. So what did I do? I took it as a kind of a joke, man. I did. I looked at the burger and noticed all the extra onions, however they was on top. And I know, like I said, the average person of you probably would have took it back. I said, customer service had me shook. Customer service got me shook. I was mad. I mean, I, I laughed, but I was mad because I had to get rid of all these onions that fell all out in the car and everything. You know, I guess this guy said, oh, he wants extra onions. I'm going to give him his extra onions. You got some little 19-year-old kid that probably worked a double the day before, and then they call him at 4 in the morning to see if he can work the breakfast shift. He couldn't work the breakfast shift, but he'll be in midway through the breakfast shift, so he ain't had no rest. He's been working like crazy. He's been making all this overtime money, and he's spending it on the Xbox, but he never can play that Xbox because he's working all these doubles. So what did he do? He say, he hit that, that sign, double onions, extra onions, and it just... Oh, man, I'm trying to get out of here, man. And they talking about extra onion. Everybody trying to be particular. Oh, you want your extra onion? Here's your extra onion. And <laughs> gave them to me on top of the burger. <laughs> so that's part of customer service, man. You know, you deal, you got to deal with these things, you know. And um, that's why I hate doing it. I would, you know, I have a person, like I said, would have took that burger back to McDonald's, went back down the line and said, hey, look, I need to, and been furious. I need to see a manager. I asking for a manager at McDonald's is just like asking for the last guy who didn't get fired. The last guy that didn't quit is stuck in there. I mean, we're facing a national shortage of workers. So 
this guy, for me, working all those doubles and coming in at four in the morning looking tired and ain't got time to enjoy his overtime check, he's mad. You know, so the only place when you think about it, me using customer service as a server, the only place I don't mind going or returning stuff to because I don't have to go there is Amazon. You do not have to go face to face. That's why I love it so much. I am not looking at someone in a line and saying, can I return this microphone? Can I return this tie, this shoe, or this uh, vaporizer and this, you know, I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is getting online and pushing a few keys. Don't have to look at nobody face to face. I don't even have to call. Because calling with customer service is terrible. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment during or after this segment at Tony DeMayer at anchor.fm. That's T O N Y D A M A Y O R at anchor.fm. Or Big Dog 0862 at me.com. That's B I G D O G 0862 at me.com. Or you can call at 785-307-4662. We look forward to hearing from you. Now, back to our set. I called the IRS the other day and stayed on hold for two hours and 15 minutes. If you don't believe me, call them. Especially if you call them the payment area where they didn't mess up money for you or messed up your taxes or somebody else messed up your taxes. <coughs> they only do what you send them. I found that out. They only complete what you sent them, you know. And so um, I stayed on there and just, yeah, I just took the phone off the hook and put it on speaker until somebody finally came. Two hours. And that's because I really, 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 really wanted to talk to them and had to reach them. So I love Amazon. Return something. Amazon's so good that you could be returning something. And they'll tell you, nah, it ain't worth us returning it and getting it back to you. Just keep it. We're going to send you another one. They did that to me with a few different items. Man, it's not, the item ain't even worth enough for them or the envelope that they were going to send it in. So they said, oh, just keep it. Oh, that's customer service at its best. I love it. I love it. But I dread the customer service worker. Last week, you listen to me? Last week, my wife ordered a cake for work. You know, a cake is going to have a picture all on the cake and looking all pretty and everything like that. And um, she called me from work. And she said, Tony, Tony, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go down to Dylan's and pick up that cake. I said, oh, no. Oh, Really? Who do I have to deal with? All you got to do is go to the bakery and tell them my name and tell them what the cake you got, Sergeant so-and-so on it, and it's a picture. Just tell them that they'll have it ready. So I finally get in my car and leave my job and go down to the bakery, and I stand in front of the bakery there, and no one's there. I even lean over there a few times and say, hello, hello, hello. A few times I did that, no one answered. And this guy walked past, I said, hey, is somebody that can get somebody from the bakery here? He said, oh, I don't work here. I just, he was one of the vendors. He said, but you might want to go down to the meat department. So I had to walk all the way over to the meat department, thinking that as soon as I walk away from the counter, somebody's going to show up and I'm going to come back and it's going to be about eight people in front of me, you know. That's that fear of customer service. So I go over to the bakery. I mean, to the butcher and get back to the bakery. They said they're going to pay someone. So they paid someone and someone Fallon came. Granted, we're about 20 minutes into the picking this cake up now. And she said, yeah, what can I do for you? I said, I'm here to pick up a cake. The cake costs so-and-so amount. And uh, it has this picture on it. And has my wife's last name on the tag, is what I'm told. So she goes to the back, looking at all of these refrigerator freezers and looking up under here, looking there, then go the other way and look there. 
and finally come back and she said, I don't know if this is it or not, but because this cake has, she says, my wife's name and a picture on it. Now I want to say, did I just tell you it's going to have her name on it and a picture? So I don't know. I don't guess. I guess she thought it was my cake because somebody on the cake didn't look like us. You know, <laughs> so uh, I got the cake. Paid for the cake. Called my wife. Said I just paid so and so for the cake. She said you did what? It wasn't supposed to cost that much. Oh, and so I was like, come on, man. I didn't know that. So the next day, this cake drawing draws out to the next day. My wife said, hey, that cake was not supposed to go cost that much. So and so told me that they want to give us a refund. And I need you to go down there. <laughs> you need me to go down there again? What am I thinking? More customer service. Exactly. I'm thinking more customer service, more going down there to the line, more going there. And this time I got to go to customer service probably. She said, no, you don't have to go to customer service. Tell me. Just go to the bakery and they're going to give you a refund. Same old thing again. I get to the bakery. Nobody's there. I said hello. And that triggered someone to come out from the back. And I told the lady, I said, yeah, I'm here because of the cake um, that I'm supposed to be getting the refund from. Oh, oh, yeah. That's easy. Just go up to the counter. You need to go to the service desk. They're going to take care of you up there. They already know about it. I said, wow, I'm walking back with my shoulders up like, hey, customer service is working for me today. I feel pretty great. <laughs> I get up there and a the lady said, well, let me tell you this first. I get up there and a the line is long as packed, but on one side, there's nobody there. So since I'm just grabbing something and going, I figured I can just walk over to that side and I walk up to that side and that stand. And you know how when someone see you, but they don't see you. And you just twiddle your thumbs or whatever like that. Surf on your phone and whatever. So I finally said, I said, hey, they sent me up here from the bakery. She said, yeah, I know. I need your receipt. I said, huh? I need your receipt and we'll give you a refund. I said, I don't have a receipt for the cake. It may be with the cake. I just picked it. They told me all I had to come down here and you was going to give me a refund. Nobody said anything about a receipt. Well, you, you can't get your money back unless you get a receipt. You know, I start bubbling and boiling. The heat start going to my head and everything. Because no one told me this. And so I said, all right, I'll go look for the receipt. And she said, yeah. And when you find a receipt, when you come back, don't come right up here to the counter. Go stand in line like everybody else. That's exactly how she said it. So I just walked out the store. Sometimes people are just having a bad day. Sometimes something has happened to mess up their day or got a problem at home and sometimes they're just a jerk they just like that they just like acting like that sometimes sometimes but they may have a bad day they, they got a pair of shoes from amazon and didn't want to send them back so they kept them anywhere but the shoes are too tight they found out they were too tight at work you know they, they, they messed up you know or they bought a package of socks from Walmart earlier that day and got home and one of the pair of socks is missing. They just mad going through that day. So they may experience some rough customer service too. So what better way to take it out? Let's take it out on me. So I went home. I went home, dug through the garbage and found the receipt. It was in the bag of some other stuff that I purchased when I got the cake. Took the receipt up there, got up there, and Miss Meany was standing right there, but it was no line. It was another lady. So I just proceeded past Miss Meany because, you know, them shoes ain't fitting right, and she's a little bit upset. And I went down to the lady to get her some Doc Martens on, and her feet looked like they just standing tall and looking good. And I said, hey, here's the receipt for that cake. Bing, bing, bing. Took my card. Bam satisfied see you later that's the kind of customer service that helps you out a little bit she was very nice you know so i just wanted to let you guys know how much i despise standing in the line taking stuff back i have stuff in my closet now that i just didn't want to take back i just didn't want to face it so i'm going to squeeze into it or 
I'm going to wear it while it's big. You know, it may be big, but I'm still going to wear it. It's not exactly what I want, and I'm going to keep it because I don't want to do it. A lot of times, I ask Catherine to do it, you know. So, this is my story of the experience I had with taking stuff back. Experience, strength, and hope. My strength. I'm gaining strength because, hey, I'm getting stronger. I did it on my own. I took it back. I felt good. I didn't blow up or say anything, right? My hope, my hope is that Walmart start doing returns like Amazon. I can just send it back to them. This is Tony Timms. I want you to have a good day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy what I said to you. Continue to listen to the program. Listen to what I got to say. This is my birthday month, the month of August. I celebrate the whole month. I was born on August the 3rd. And I'm going to keep on celebrating. I thank you so much for listening. And I pray that I said something to enlighten you. We're going to be a little lighthearted this month, you know. But we still have people's stories to tell. If you want to tell your story, you have a story to tell of experience, strength, and hope. Things that you have been through through your life. Hit me up. Hit me up at bigdog0862 at me.com. Call me at 785-307-4662. Look for the podcast on any major platform. You can even go to Google and just type in my name on Google. You can find me that way. I thank you. Have a blessed day. Be honest, be safe, but most of all, be real. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'm glad that you tuned in today to listen and listen from the beginning to the end. And I appreciate that. Now, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at Big Dog 0862 at me.com. Big Dog 0862 at me.com. That's my email address. You can also reach me by phone at 785-307-4662. You can leave a message there. You can reach me on the internet. Just type my name into any search engine, any search engine. And the way you do that is just type in Antonio the Mayor Tim's Antonio the Mayor Tim. Most of all, appreciate when you listen on YouTube because you can leave a message there. You can leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can leave a like or dislike. You can leave a comment, but most of all, you can subscribe. So please continue to listen to me and continue to support this show that focuses on experience, strength, and your hope. Thank you. Have a good day. Be blessed. Be nice. But be real, most of all.